Hello, this video is designed to help you with your experimentation pages. The idea of when you've done your artists, you've done your statement of intent, you've taken your own primary pictures, and now you need to work from your primary or secondary pictures in the style of your artists, in the style that you intend to do going forward. So this one specifically is acrylic, an acrylic portrait with really, really loose, brushy brush strokes, brushy style. The idea, the learning objectives, understand how to create experiment test pages in your book, be able to create loose, bold brush strokes on a portrait specifically, and experiment with colour mixing as well. So I've just designed my sketchbook page like this, as you can see. So I've put acrylic at the top, because this would be my acrylic pages. I might then go on to try oil, or oil pastel, or whatever it, whatever it may be. And I'm drawn from my primary pictures, I've drawn the whole face and then I've drawn a close-up of the lips and then the eyes and the nose. And I've also added some words, brushy, loose and heavy because that's links to what I'm trying to do and that will help you show your thoughts and your intentions when you do that. So this is how I've presented mine. Okay, so all I'm going to use for this is white paint, red, blue and yellow paint. I will need black at some point and I've just got two brushes this size. So to start with I'm just going to mix the skin colour, so mix the basic skin colour and then apply that all around the face before I layer all the other colours. I'm just going to pause when I mix that skin colour. So Just so you can see how I'm mixing it, I'll put some white on the page and I'm slowly putting a bit of yellow, a bit of red, a bit of blue into the skin colour. I can see that it looks a bit too pinky, so I'll keep adding a bit of yellow and in tiny bits into the white because as soon as I add too much you can't take the paint out but you can add it in can't you so tiny bits at a time need a little bit more white and it's much better as well to start pale again because it's much easier to make it darker and darker as you go rather than to make it lighter because um, if you think the white is a lot weaker than the other colours so I keep adding dabs of that colours a little bit too much red there, so now I need to use a lot of yellow, a lot of blue to change it again. This is what I mean, as soon as it goes too dark it's difficult to change, so now I have to use a lot of white. So keep experimenting with that skin colour. What you can do is when you, you think the skin colour looks accurate, you can just dab it on your photo that you're working from just to check, and then you can see is it too cold, is it too warm, what do I need to add more of? to make sure that it's accurate. So you can see the blue is really, really, really powerful compared to the other colours. As soon as you add too much blue, you end up with a green colour. You just keep adding the colours into it until you're happy with that skin colour. The yellow is really, really weak as well in comparison to the other colours. So now I just need to get a lot more of the white in. So I need a decent amount of paint here because I'm going to do most of the face to start with. Alright, so I'll just mix that colour and then I'll start to apply it to the face. Okay, so I'm happy with my skin colour. I've got a darker version at the top here for the darker areas of skin and a lighter version here. It's easier if I've got that ready for when I start. So I don't want to be perfect with this, I don't want to blend I think you have a natural instinct to want to blend because you think, oh, it's going to be more realistic, more realistic if I keep blending, keep blending. But actually, this style is about being really, really brushy. So just clean my brush, dry my brush a little bit, and I'll start to add just the medium colours in the face to start with. So just working from your primary picture, have your picture next to you when you work, and just put the skin colours down just as a base. I think with acrylic, people use too much paint because they come generally in quite the big bottles, I'm just using these ones, you have a natural instinct to use loads of it because the bottle's big, different to oil. So actually it's much easier to work with a little bit of paint at a time and keep building it up. So I'm just looking, where's the medium tones? And I don't know if you noticed, but I'm painting in the direction of the face. So when the face is going this way, painting here, in that direction, in that direction. So your brush strokes are in the same direction as the skin. It's really important with this as well because you are going to see the brush strokes still when it's finished. So it needs to be darker there. 
move in and a bit up here and then I'm going to add some of my darker skin tones in so it's darker here gives you a base where your light and your darks are You have to be quite bold with it, with this style. Look at your primary picture. Where is it dark? Where is it light? It does help if you've actually edited your pictures first and exaggerated the contrast and exaggerated the saturation. It really helps me because if you exaggerate the saturation, you will be able to see more easily where is the skin green toned, where is it got more red tones, where has it got more yellowy tones, because um, it does it for you rather than you having to figure that out yourself. So now I'm going to put some of the light tones in, wash my brush, let my brush dry. Some of the lighter tones, so it's a bit lighter near the nose here. And because I want that really brushy style, I'm actually just going to leave the white paper to come through. rather than painting it white. There's no, obviously there's no point really in painting it white unless you're doing something really, really figurative and you want to blend perfectly. But because this is that experimental, heavy brush stroke style, just leave the white paper to come through. So there's quite a white shine here in my image. So I'm just going to leave it white. So it's a bit lighter on the top here. So this is the skin tones and I think sometimes you you think that it's all this colour, you think that a face is all just skin tones. It's about exaggerating the skin tones, so you will find as we move forward there's a lot of blue tones, there's a lot of green tones, there's a lot of pinky tones, purple tones. This is just the base. So I've got a base of my light and darks really there. And then I'm going to build up the other colours. Okay, so now I've mixed quite a yellowy colour. And again, it's really, really helpful if you've edited your primary pictures, increasing the saturation, because that will enhance all the different tones in the face for you. So now I'm just going to, with my brush strokes in the same direction of the face, add in those yellowy tones. I'm not going to try to blend it. So I think I have a natural instinct to want to blend, blend, make it perfect, perfect, perfect. But these test pages really are about showing that you've given a different style to go, had a go at some different painting styles, printing styles, whatever it is, testing, 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 rather than just, this is the style I like, this is what I'm going to go with. It's about coming out of your comfort zone a bit. So I'm just going to darken that um, <coughs> yellowy tone a bit. So to darken it, you need to just put all the colours in again. So I need more red, more blue, because that's going to darken it. And then I just want more yellow to still get the yellowy tone. Red and blue, I've just darkened that there. But I've still got that yellow tone, just so under here. It's a bit darker, you see a bit more yellowy, a bit more greeny. You will find, naturally, there are lots of greeny tones in the skin. Cooler colours. And the cooler colours are always where the face is slightly in shadow. So under this lip is slightly in shadow under the lip. So that's why it's a cooler colour here. It's actually really quite dark and a cool colour this side of the nose because again that would be in shadow. It's in shadow on my image. So I'm just going to build that up there. I think it needs to be even darker, even bluer. Be bold with it, that's what this style is about. Really, really exaggerating the colour. Bold colour, bold brush strokes. I'm actually going to use my smaller brush and just get that shadow in. You need to be careful with your brush strokes, even though it's that loose style. I think people naturally go too quick sometimes. Be careful. So now I've got that on my brush, where else is dark? It's actually even darker here, more blue. That's the point of 
the painting I think that you can make it more interesting than the photograph is so exaggerate your photograph digitally and exaggerate it when you're painting as well I think dark down here, really green ok so I'm just going to go around and put some more dark tones in the face ok so I've added some of the darker cooler tones and now I'm going to just mix some warmer tones keep dipping it in the white instead of the water so obviously warmer tones add more red make sure you use the blue just to tone it down you want to find all your warmer tones and add those in again really really easy to do if you've edited the saturation on your photograph and this is obviously a portrait but this style will translate to loads of different things so just finding the warmer colours really warm there to make it a bit warmer above the eyebrows a bit warmer than I've done it you do have to be bold with this style you just have to be confident with putting the brush strokes down and then leaving them natural instincts definitely to try and blend all the time I'm really not pushing very hard on my brush just really lightly dragging it over the painting it's really red here much more really exaggerated pinkiness on that cheek almost purpley as well and then it fades out a bit lighter so it should give the illusion of being blended without being blended because if your colours subtly change from one to the next then certainly from a distance it will have the illusion that it is blended and that will be the most effective painting like this. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and put some more warm tones all in it. Okay I've put in a lot of the dark warmer tones. I will need to almost create a colour that's in between that colour and a colour that's in between that colour just to tone it down and again give the illusion that it is blended even though it's not. And now I've just mixed a really dark ready colour because um, I want to now exaggerate the dark areas. So just as much as you want to exaggerate all the colour, make the green green and make the red red and make the purple more purple, you also need to exaggerate the dark and light. So that's why I said leave the white areas white. You don't have to. This is about experimenting. But I wanted to show you a really, really loose experimental type of painting. And you will find, even that doing this type of painting, it will help you refine a more figurative style as well. So um, I'm going to add a really dark, bold bit here where it's a bit darker near the nose and it's even darker than that so again red and blue is going to give you your darkest colour certainly if it's warm you will still need a bit of yellow just to make it that slightly browner colour and I'm going to use a really small brush now rest my hands on the page just to do some of the detailed bits In a much smaller brush to get these little bits. Just going to make that a bit more redder there. And then there's really dark tones. Really dark. Probably as dark as I can get it. 
without using black. I tend to avoid black, a lot of artists avoid black, unless it is something that is actually black, like the pupil or eyelashes, for example, but it can kill the rest of the colour and it just completely dominates, so I'm going to avoid using it with this style. So I've just mixed a really, really, really dark purple. I have used a bit of yellow just to make it not bright purple. And then I'm going to do some of the detail in the lip. trying to paint in the right direction again so I'm flicking it around to create that curve I do find whether it's a drawing or a painting as soon as you put the really dark areas in it tends to come to life a bit more let's just outline those shadows around the lips and in the lips Even with a really loose, brushy painting, still need to have refined areas. Yes, I'm going to do what I've just done, but on the nose as well. Okay, so I'll continue to refine the lips around the nose and the eyebrows as well. One point to make is when you're doing eyebrows, it's actually there is different tones in there. It's quite easy to think, oh, that's mainly just brown. But I've used red, I've used purple, I've used darker purple tones, lighter purple tones. Um, so lots of different tones, exaggerate it everywhere. Um, so now I've got a really small brush and a dark green colour. And I'm just going around refining some really small little areas that need that colour. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm not actually going to paint the eyes. I'm going to paint the eyes in the other, on the other page, on the other experiment, so you can see that more closely. And I think that's important to do with your experiment pages. It is just that, it's an experiment. You are not doing refined final pieces. This is allowing you to experiment with skin tones in particular. And then you can focus on nose, lips, eyes in more detail. So just getting some darker, more refined bits here over the top, layering over the top of what we've already done. Noses are tricky. Lots of small changes in colour. So I need a really pinky tone for the tip of the nose. Again, exaggerate the light and the dark just as much as you like the colour. So I'm going to use a really, really pale, pale pink. More pale. My palette's getting a bit messy now. I'll make sure you give enough room. So it's really pale on the tip of the nose. It's probably not pale enough. More white, more white, more white. I'm going to go straight over with a white just to layer to make sure it's really pale. And find that colour again. Wherever it is. Some more pale colours there. The nose is starting to come together. Loads of teeny tiny little brush strokes. Make sure that they're going in the direction of your painting. So I am going to use white. But, as I said before, I'm also going to leave a lot of the areas where the reflection would be so on the lips you'd always have a shine on the lips somewhere really white bit I'm just going to leave that white because it is that style it's not refined so you've got to have the confidence to just say actually that's white enough that I could just leave that white and not try to blend it too much pink inside there I'm painting really, 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 really lightly and I'm actually still getting that brushy effect where you can see where the brush has run out of paint. 
and that's what I like and I've actually just exaggerated that here in the neck for example I'm just going to leave that like that rather than having a background I'm just going to fade it out or I might put some messy background colours in with it I think it just looks nice to fade it out and then you can have your annotations around that as well but I'll show you that later so it's at the stage of refining now so when a colour looks too contrasting, so I like the fact that that contrasts a lot because that, that on my picture there is a heavy contrast there. But for example, this line here looks too by itself. So now I need to make colours that are similar to that and put it next to it so it blends it out and, and fades that a little bit. And it's going to slowly get lighter, so I'm slowly making my colour lighter and lighter and blended out that line. A more pinky bit underneath it, on top of the lip. Now you're finding the tiny little bits of colour to refine it. Using the small brush, whereas before I was using a bigger brush. So just there I've put some paint down, I realise I've put too much paint down. So I'm going to wash my brush, dry my brush, and with a brush with nothing on, brush over it because there's enough paint already on the page. So I've just blended that in. You can with water, there are some areas that you might want a little bit more blended than others. You can with a damp brush go over and blend. It does really depend what style you're trying to get, but you do want to show in your sketchbook that you've tested a range of styles. So leaving it really brushy would work really well. Certainly if you've got an artist that works in this style, you need to show that you've tried successfully to work in their style and not blend. And I think that's why acrylic works really well with this style because it has a tendency anyway to not want to blend itself. If you're going to do that then use oil. So I've not blended these colours on the nose but what I've done is, you know, I've not physically blended the paints together, the colours together. What I've done is put colours really similar next to each other and it's given the illusion that that's blended there from orange, lighter orange or from red to orange to a pinky colour. It's given the illusion of blending. So nose is getting there. Be careful with nostrils, they're not circles, different shapes. really 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 obvious but don't just do a black dot for a nostril it's not there's lots of shapes in here you see that red under the nostrils a bit too red so then I'm going to put some more green tones in it because it's got a shadow under there just blend that out fine all your dark lines that's what brings the painting together I think you hopefully notice when I started to put the darker areas in it brings it together working on the nostril Now I'm going to get white on my brush, add some white tones in where I want it to be, it's brighter than it is. You have to clean your brush when you're using white unlike other colours because, let's see, it's going to be contaminated ideally. Use a new palette. Okay, so I want it white there. So where are the reflections? the lightest areas. Hopefully 
you can leave some of the page coming through look I'm going to here and here but there's also some areas that need highlighting as well with the white there's a really white bit here I'm going to paint it in a bit more in the nose blend it in slightly just with a damp brush and there's some blue tones as well that I now want to really exaggerate so I'm just going to mix a light bluey tone okay so I've got a really pale blue there's some areas that I can just notice are really blue and again I'm making them more blue than they are in the picture because that's the style of this and this time I'm just going to leave the brush strokes there and not blend them. A lot of portraits can quite easily be too orangey, ready. Really, really important to get your blue tones in. Really, really important. Exaggerate it wherever it's blue. Now I'm just going to do some refinement around the eyes, but I'm going to leave the iris just as it is. Okay, what I've done so is refined the colours so it looks a little bit more blended. So when I had colours that looked too contrasting, I put a colour in between that was in between the two and then it gives the illusion it's blended. And I've also just refined, as I said, the eyes and even the nose. Where you've got, it's really difficult because when you have this really brushy style, you feel that it's, you can't do any refined bits. Was actually that edge near the nose has to be quite sharp because in my photo there is a sharp contrast between where that starts and where the cheek starts and again with the eye so you do have to still have really really delicate tiny little lines so what I'm going to do is um, just do an experimental background because if this was your experiment pages you need to be thinking about how you're doing the background as well so because I've done really brushy style I'm just going to found that colour, made the colour that's similar to that, put a bit more yellow in it, I'm just going to take it out, so imagining that I had a um, white canvas, black, blank white background, and then I could just do this, so I might get some more of that kind of greeny tone, and do the same down here, and just experiment with the background. Um, you might have an idea of what you want to do with the background, so you can put that in. But these pages really are about testing what you like and what you don't like. With the point being that if you really don't like it and you think it's really unsuccessful, then just say, why don't you like it, and next time try something different. So it's not about having a perfect refined piece. What I'm doing to do this is I've got just a piece of paper and I'm really watering it down so I've got that transparency effect and I'm trying to you know these brush strokes take them up across I've got that background leaving the eyes like that you know that might be a reason why you're leaving the eyes like that that might be a specific part of your piece that might be important it might just be that on the next page you want to do more refined features and test how you do those Okay, so I'm happy with that. That's my acrylic portrait. I'm also going to do a demonstration on the features and how to do them a little bit more refined but still in the brushy style. Okay, thank you.